We've got our example application up and running using props now and our chord editor, but now we need to have multiple paths. We want to be able to work with multiple songs, and for that, we're going to utilize React Router. Taking a look at the application that we have as of right now, we have no we have no path. Our URL is just this is the raw root URL, and we can manipulate this by adding some Chord Pro in here. But this just means we only ever have one song that can be worked with, and that's kind of sad. So today we're going to change that. We're going to modify how we handle state a little bit by moving away from a single song to having multiple songs. And then we are going to add different paths. So if we were working in Rails or some other server-side rendered web application framework, you would have something like songs and then the song ID. And that's exactly what we're going to do with this, except for we're working with a single page application. So we're going to use React Router for this. It's going to allow us to define these routes, and it's actually going to give us some niceties around working with history and push state so that when you go from you know, slash songs, which we're going to build as a list of songs to slash one to back. Uh, you can use your back button and everything works, even though it's not actually reloading the page, because in our case, if you were to reload the page, it would actually reset the state. So you'll see that later on too. But that's what we want to have. The URL is really the API for the web, right? Like if you make a web page, it's good to have a URL because then your users can share it, they can link to it, they can work with it in that kind of way. So for us to get started, we're going to yarn add and then we're going to actually add React Router DOM. And React Router is a really interesting project. And the first time that I messed with it, I was super confused because I assumed the router was going to work as kind of something separate from the normal components that I work with. Because when I think component, I think UI. But React Router is a component, and it's really components all the way down. So if we take a look now, uh, and let's make sure that this stays up to date, we'll restart. Um, there are some extra things we can do. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up app.js. So it's in source at, whoops, source app.js. And then this is where we're going to actually add. So remember, the app is kind of the top level of our application. So this is where we're going to put our router. It, it's going to go in the same spot where we put our like header and footer, right? So in reality, the thing we want to swap out is everything inside of here. This is going to be the thing that changes. So it makes sense for us to, if we think of the router as being a component, to have it in here. So this is going to be a browser router. And then we need a matching closing tag for that. And then you also need to wrap this in a div. It doesn't handle uh, going right to the rest of your markup. So and then we're going to call this main content just so we can kind of differentiate it. And we'll probably style this with something special later. So in order for us to work with the browser router, we need to come and pull this in. So we're going to import browser router from React router DOM. And we're going to actually import quite a few things from this. But for right now, we'll just do this one. And we've, we've wrapped our main content in this. And if we take a look at the server side, even though we've saved the file, nothing seems to be broken. So let's go back and look at the actual application. And it renders just fine. And if we take a look and actually inspect what we've got here, and we look at this in our React tools, and we say browser router, so we still have it. It actually rendered out as a thing. And then within it, it actually contains a router, which it added by itself. And then it contains our markup. And there's some extra things on this router. It has a match, which in this case, uh, there's really not anything going on. But it, this tells you kind of the route you're currently on. And we'll work with this in a little bit. So the first real thing that we're going to need to do with this is define a route. And we want our route basically to show the chord editor. And it's going to be a little bit more than, than that right away. But so we want a route to be slash song slash some sort of song ID. And that means we're going to have to change quite a few things. First thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in a route. Whoops. Yeah, just route no R there. And then we're going to change state down here. So we're going to go from having song to having songs. And whoops, each song is just going to have a, an ID. So we'll make it a string like this. And then we need to pass that in internally too. And then we'll change everywhere there's a one to a two. And put that there. And then we'll differentiate these in some way. So we'll just call this lyrics. For song one, lyrics for song two, and we'll save that. 
And that means our update song function right here doesn't really make any sense either. So we're going to do what's kind of a best practice here, and that is we're going to pop off songs um, using some ES6 features here. So we're going to say this.state.songs. This will make a copy of the object, essentially. And then we're going to say songs, and then we want the song.id, because that's how we're going to identify it equals song. So this is the song that was passed in. We'll just reset that within. And then we'll set the state. Instead of setting a single song, we'll set songs. And this is another ES6 thing here. This will expand out and it just kind of knows, just saves us from doing the redundant kind of song songs stuff. So we'll do that. And this is kind of nice because at no point are we trying to manipulate the state object by itself. So we're not doing this.state.songs subscript something rather equals something else we're only using set state once we've configured our entire like database if you will of songs and that means at any point we can bail out and not actually have screwed up the state of our application as long as everything goes smoothly we will hit set state that'll update the app it'll re-render and then we'll be good to go now we get to go down and work in our render fun function down here so a route is just another component, and it has a couple different things. So we can define a path on it, which we're going to do, and we want this to be songs slash, and then we'll put colon song ID, and this will allow us to work with this song ID. The router itself will kind of parse this out and give it to us. Um, sometimes, if it if it works out, you can say component and just give it a name of a component, so like chord editor. But in our case right now, we actually need to pass something to chord editor. So what we can do is we can define the render function. And this is going to give us a props, and then we will define some extra stuff in here too. So we close that off, and then close the actual route, and we'll move this up. And what we need to do here, this is just a render function like we would have in a component. And so we're, we're creating a render function that is then going to render something else. So you could make a subcomponent to kind of do this if you wanted to. But in our case, we're going to do a little bit of work. So we're going to say, get the song, and that'll be this.state.songs. And then, so we have these props now, and there's a match in there. Match has params, which means the, the parameter that is inside of the URL match. And then we can identify that as song ID. So we will use that to subscript into this.state.songs to pop off the song. And then we will do a return... And we'll do this as a variable thing. So if song, if it exists, then we want to say do chord editor with this.song. Or not this, sorry. There we go. And then else, we want to do what I would call kind of a poor man's 404. So we'll just say song not found. We'll eventually do something better here. But for right now, this kind of just works out for us. So let's save this and see what happens. Let's make sure... First off, that we didn't break anything. Okay, we did. That's fine. Kind of expected. Oh, okay. Whew, man, that took forever to find. But there we go. We forgot to close our H1 tag. That should get us going. So now if we bounce back over and we take a look, our, our root route has nothing going on here. So now if we go to songs slash one, it'll give us lyrics for song one. If we go, oops, go to song slash two, we'll get the second one. And then if we go to song slash 14, we should get song not found. So we just successfully added routes to our application, but that doesn't mean everything works yet. So let's try to change this. I'm actually typing pretty rapidly and nothing is happening, which means that something is wrong inside of our update state. And it looks pretty good from inside of our app here. This is pretty straightforward. So that tells me that it's probably inside of our chord editor. So let's open that up. And handle change, ah, so we're setting just the Chord Pro explicitly, no song ID. So what we want to do here is instead go const, we'll, we'll get the song, and this will just be the current song that got passed in, right? So we'll say this.props.song, and we'll do the thing we did before to make a copy of it. And then we'll say song.chordpro equals this, like we had before. And then instead of passing this hash that doesn't have everything that a song might have, we will just pass in the entire song. So let's save that and go back and see if we can make modifications. Now, hey, we can actually do things. That's pretty cool. So the last thing that we want to be able to do is we want to be able to go to slash songs. 
or just slash on the root directory. We'll just, we'll just say slash songs for right now. And we want to be able to see a list of songs and be able to click to them and take you to that song. So for that, we're going to come back into app and we're going to add a new route. We could define a whole new component to render inside of this route, or we can just actually iterate over things. And this is the first time we've iterated over anything and while we're rendering things. So this will be a little bit interesting for us. So we say route, and then we want this to be an exact path. So we want the exact path of slash songs. And then we will do another render function here that's going to take props and it will render this out. And then inside of here, what we want to do is we want to get all of the song IDs. And we'll say object.keys, this.state.songs. This will get us all of the song IDs. And then we want to return. And then inside of here, remember, this is where we would normally put JSX, but we can execute any kind of uh, JavaScript as long as we put it inside of brackets. So we're going to have a UL, and then we're going to have the matching closing UL for that. And then inside of here, what we want to do is we want to do song IDs. I can spell. There we go. Map. And then we'll take the ID from that. And then we're going to map that to another function. And then from here, it's going to do, it's going to create an LI. And then this is one thing we need to do. We need to give it a, a key. And this key doesn't do anything for us, but it does tell React, like, there's an item, and you can identify the container for this item that I'm iterating through. So we need to have this here, otherwise React's going to get mad at us. And then inside of here, we want to link. And we want to link to, and then we need to put this in squiggly brackets because we're going to use a little bit of JavaScript with a template string. And then we just want to link to slash songs slash ID and close that off and then say song. And here again, we will show that ID just so we can differentiate them. And now it's closed off. Something's still not 100% right according to this, I think. We're missing the parentheses that matches with this map. So we should be able to put that there. And then I know it's going to blow up because we used the link. And this comes from React Router also. And this is going to be, it's essentially like an anchor tag for us, but it's going to handle some of the push state stuff behind the scenes so that we don't have to worry about manipulating the history. So we will import the link. Let's make sure everything builds. It's giving us a little bit of extra stuff. Oh, right. That makes sense. This actually needs to return something. So from in here, it's actually going to return that. Well, I guess we'll make this a little prettier. Move that onto a new line. There we go. So returns inside of returns. Come back. Everything is looking clean there. So now if we go back, it should refresh it. And right away, it goes to slash songs. And then when we click in, this is the kind of neat thing about push state. Um, we'll just add another thing here, say this. And now if I hit backwards, I can come back to song one, you'll see that we're still maintaining our history. But if I were to refresh using command R, we're going to lose that state. So that is what link provides us. It gives you that uh, push state that, that works out for us. And now we can switch from one song to another. And that is our brief introduction to using React Router. If we go back and take a look at the code, this is a little bit messy, I would say, uh, compared to something you might want to ship in production. But this is like the quick and dirty of how we would render a route. So this is defining everything about a route within the render function itself instead of using a component. Versus down here, we're just doing a little bit of logic and then rendering out the component using the props that we set up last time in the way that makes sense for what we're trying to do. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to leave a comment down below telling me why you liked it and what you're going to do with this knowledge. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get more of these tutorials each week. And also don't forget to join us on Patreon, Facebook, Slack, so you can keep the chat going, and on Twitter. But as always, have a nice week.